Several Democratic governors have announced that they are ending their state school mask mandates. Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey, and Oregon all plan to lift statewide mask requirements in schools by the end of February or March, citing the rapid decline of Omicron. So I guess at least the kids will be able to enjoy warm weather for a little bit. Um, so that's, I guess, somewhat nice. The mask should have come off a long time ago for kids. You know, in some countries, in Europe, for example, um, the kids never wore masks. So we keep citing, well, in Asia they do, and so that's why they should wear masks. But I mean, I don't know how effective masks actually are with little kids. I'm sure they're all pulling them down and not properly wearing them. And they're I'm sure they're not fitted to their face properly or they're just little cloth masks. So, um, you know, uh, but again, I, I'm glad that some states are coming to their senses. Now, meanwhile, here in California, indoor masking requirements for vaccinated people will end next week, but masks will still be the rule for school children. So if you're vaccinated, then here in California, you will be able to walk around freely and you can go anywhere in California if you're vaccinated. You could show your vaccine card and get into restaurants and bars. And now you won't even need to wear a mask everywhere you go. And so if you are vaccinated, it won't matter if you have COVID, you can spread your virus freely. <laughs> That's what they're saying to us here in California with these stupid rules. Um, still a vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Don't they know if they're following the science like they claim that the vaccine is not stopping the spread? You, I mean, you could maybe argue by a little bit, but we're talking a little bit when it comes to Omicron. Everybody I know is getting Omicron is or just getting the virus. I don't know which strain. I don't think they're sequencing for it. But um, fully vaccinated, I'm seeing boosted people getting the virus. So, yeah, I, well, but as long as you're vaccinated, then you can go ahead and, and spread it around. So the debate over masks in schools has been polarizing in much of the U.S. with parents, teachers unions, and government officials often at odds over the matter. Just this week, the Supreme Court of Virginia dismissed a lawsuit from Chesapeake parents against Governor Glenn Youngkin over his executive order requiring schools to make masking optional for students. So, they're like mad that parents are going to have a choice. They want to make sure that everybody is mandated to do it. And, um, they, you know, how dare you allow your child to not wear a mask? You're putting my child at risk. That's what they're thinking, even though their kid is masked and likely vaccinated. Thirteen Chesapeake parents have sued Youngkin just before the Chesapeake School Board voted on January 20th to end universal masking. So the lawsuit was thrown out because now, you know, the, the school board said, yeah, we probably shouldn't be doing all this masking anyway. And so it was kind of a moot point. But again, choice, you know, the parents argued that Governor Youngkin lacks the authority he claims to make the order and said they wanted to keep their children from suffering irreparable harm and damage. Then keep your kid masked if you think that that's not going to cause them suffering uh, and irreparable harm and damage. Keep them masked if that's what you want to do or keep them home if you can. But requiring other people to mask their children um, is, I mean, I don't, I don't understand this idea. Now, look, I understand that there is a, there's laws against causing harm to other people, right? So you can't drink, you can't drink and drive because you might cause an accident. And that is you causing harm on somebody else. I understand that if you've been told that you're HIV positive and you continue to engage in unprotected sex and you don't notify your partners that you're HIV positive, you are potentially harming them, right? But people that are out and about, you know, if you know you have COVID, you're probably staying home. I mean, maybe they can make a, you know, if they really wanted to get into it, I guess. And if they wanted to be more scientific and maybe more fair, I suppose, you know, they could try to make a law that if you knowingly have COVID, so if you've tested positive, it's been verified with a PCR test and you know you have it, then you have to be quarantined. If you go out, you know, and I'm even leery about this, but I'm just saying as an example, if you go out and about and you knowingly then spread the virus, then you could be held liable for that. But to be asking people who are not currently infected with COVID or who are not knowingly infected with COVID to wear a mask in order to prevent or to, um, to give safety to another person. I don't know how, how, you know, in our society, I'm not sure if we say, well, I, it's, it's okay, it's one thing to not harm another person. It's another thing to have to keep another person safe. And that is what asking people to mask up is doing. It's saying, 
people say, you have to keep me safe. Because if you don't believe the mask is for you, if you believe the mask is for others, then it's about, I'm wearing this mask to keep you safe. Well, the way to keep me the safest, I suppose, is to test, right? And to make sure you don't have COVID. And if you don't have COVID, why do you then need to wear a mask on top of that? Um, I, and I get it. People say, well, because they don't know for sure if they have COVID and that's why they need to wear a mask. Again, it's, I don't know if it's my obligation or if it's society's obligation, if we should place this obligation on one another to keep one another safe. Where does that lead to? In what other ways are we going to have to keep each other safe? Again, it's one thing to not cause each other harm. It's a whole different ballgame when you say, I have to keep you safe. Um, so just something to think about. Now, teachers, even teachers unions are actually starting to come around finally. They've been the staunchest about, um, about various mandates and requirements for kids. Randy Weingarten, head of the Influential American Federation of Teachers, indicated that she was in favor of unmasking and added that she was waiting for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to issue new guidance. However, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said Monday that mask wearing in schools still remains our recommendation. Um, uh, you know, uh, why are they allowing adults going to bars and restaurants to not wear masks to pick up on each other for a good time, you know, but they're forcing children who are there to learn to wear masks. And it, 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 of course it must make it difficult for them to learn. Uh, and then people say, well, in Asia, they're doing it like I mentioned earlier. But when you actually look at videos from Asia, the, the masks often come off, especially when the kids are interacting with one another. So I, I'm not sure how prevalent it actually is in Asia. Maybe just if you're sick, if you've got the sniffles or something, then maybe you wear a mask and that's part of their culture. But I'm not sure if it's so prevalent that everyone does it all the time. So, um, but moving on here, as calls to unmask children grow louder and louder, the White House and the CDC may ultimately be pressured into changing their stance sooner than later. Let's hope, right? Let's hope that this is coming to an end. Um, I don't know how they could keep up the narrative when you look at the numbers and this wave, we had way more cases of COVID than we've ever had before. Um, also, we had um, uh, almost equal number of deaths this wave, actually, than, than previous. A lot of times people were saying, well, no, but, um, you know, Omicron is less deadly. But if you look at the numbers, that, that might be true because we had way more cases and even though the death rate was the same as it was last January, the case number was like, you know, way higher, quadruple, maybe even 10 times higher. It was just a ton of cases. So maybe that does make the, the disease less deadly uh, all in all. I'm not I'm not 100% certain on that. But, um, you know, but hopefully everybody comes to their senses and says, okay, we just have to live with COVID. I know Fauci said that, like, it's time. We're going to live with COVID. We're going to have to live with it forever. And people just need to start wrapping that around their brains that we're not going to get to zero COVID. You're going to catch COVID. The question is, how well are you going to survive COVID? So how well you're going to survive COVID, I think largely depends on what kind of information you have. So if you believed your vaccine was just going to protect you and you got your double backs or maybe you even got boosted and you think, okay, that's it, I'm fine and good, you might be setting yourself up for some failure uh, and some disappointment when you do catch COVID because you would need to keep up on that vaccine. I think it, it wears off every you know four to six months. You need to keep up on it. If you're not keeping up on it and you thought, no, no, I did my three rounds last year. I'm good to go. You know, it doesn't work like that. You need to know about early treatments. You might have even been somebody who demonized certain early treatments and said, oh, I'm not going to take that horse medicine or whatever. And you might be missing out on your opportunity to lessen your viral load by, you know, enough to keep you out of the hospital. Um, or there's also the early treatments you know, that are, that are uh, becoming more available that are made by, you know, Pfizer and, uh, and, and whatnot. So those are also available, but they're not that available. And again, if you don't think you have COVID because you've been vaccinated and you believe I can't get COVID, you know, you're setting yourself up for failure and disappointment. So I think a lot of moving forward with this pandemic, a lot of the, the outcome is going to be dependent on how knowledgeable you've been throughout this pandemic. Or have you just relied on one, you know, put all your eggs in one basket? I think it's going to be interesting to see going forward. So hopefully the tune changes. You know, now with Fauci saying the pandemic is mostly over. Um, and, and I think that sentiment is going to kind of resonate throughout the community. I'm hoping that all of these liberal outlets that have just touted one, you know, they've been one narrative. And that is vaccine and vaccine only. Hopefully they start to actually send the message of treatment. And this is how you treat yourself when you get COVID. This is what will keep you out of the hospital. Before you go into the ER, before you get to that point, these are the things you can do. 
hopefully they actually start talking about it, but I'm not sure they will. And that might leave a lot of people in the lurch. So, um, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. Please join my locals community where you can get behind the scenes, um, pictures, and also live streams. I do those once a week. So be sure to join me on locals. The link is down below. Thank you guys so much for watching.